Staten Island? Hello, Staten Island. Is this for me? Wow, this is great. Great turnout. I had a whole speech. I'm not even going to give it. I don't want to keep this crowd away from Donald Trump. I want to report to you, though, one great thing. Donald Trump just was in the other room getting the endorsement of a very important group, the New York State Veteran Police Officers, because he loves law enforcement. Donald Trump is a supporter of our police, and I know so many people here on Staten Island. Border Patrol agents also endorsed him this week, but that's it. Without further ado, I have the honor of introducing the next president of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Thank you, everybody. No place like Staten Island, let's face it. Right? I've worked in Staten Island probably five summers. And my father always said, Staten Island, that's a great place. And, you know, I'm his son. He viewed safety. I mean, we have safety on Staten Island, right? You know who the safety is? Great police. Great police. They don't get enough credit. But we have great people on Staten Island, and I know it so well. And Grimes Hill and Tyson's Park and all of it. I love you, too. I love you, too. I was just with the owner of the hotel, great guy, and his wife, was, who's much better than him, actually. And, and he said, this is the biggest crowd we've ever had in this hotel by far. There's people outside, there's people all over the place. So that's a tribute. That's a tribute to the, to the folks that put on the dinner. That's a tribute. And Joe, I want to, where's Joe? I want to thank you, Joe. Great job. Great job. Just so you know, I'm sure you're not aware of this, there aren't too many Republicans on the council. Do we agree with that, Joe? Huh? Three. Okay. I thought there'd be one. You know? That's okay. Good job. That tells me you're really good, right? All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. So, you know, coming out, and we have a big day. Folks, you have to, you have to get out tomorrow. And tomorrow, you no, know, no, tomorrow you're going to do the following. You're going to get people, right? And then Tuesday... You're going to take all of those people you get, and we're going to have a landslide victory, and we're going to make America great again. We're going to make America great again. So, tomorrow, get everybody you can, and Tuesday, get them all together and get down, because I'll tell you what, we have something. Now, you know what's an honor? Here's what's an honor, that we have 15, 1,700 people, and that's only because of the walls. Hey, get the owner to build a larger hotel. Come here. Owner! Build a larger room. We want this room expanded next year, okay? <laughs> but uh, what's a great honor is look at you. Nobody's sitting down. No, not one person is sitting down. So sit down. Go ahead. Now, how many times? I mean, if Lion Ted Cruz came here, you would never stand up like that. I can tell you. Who, by the way, hates New York. Who hates New York. And the other one, you know, the uh, Kasich, he, uh, he comes in. Nobody knows who he is. And somebody said he did okay against Hillary. He has uh, one negative ad. Nobody's hit him. Wait till they hit him. So here's the story. For, and, and we just came out. A great Fox poll just came out yesterday on me and Hillary. I love this poll. Let me tell you, the one person she doesn't want to run against. You know that. Who? Now, the one person she doesn't want, you know, it's, it's, you know the story, it's crooked Hillary. She's as crooked as they come. 
And I'll tell you what, we are going to beat her so badly. And I'm going to do things that no other Republican that's running can do, or any Republican, period. I think, no, no, beyond. We have to get to the position. Don't forget this. I think we're going to make our delegates fairly easily. And I think we're going to be fine. I think the convention is going to be unity. I hope it's going to be unity because the Republican Party needs unity. It really needs unity. But, but when I get the nomination, we're going to come together and we're going to win New York. And if we win New York, no other person can do. You won't see. If it weren't me, it's going to be. If it weren't me, you would never see any candidate even come to New York and spend time in New York because there's zero chance that anybody can win New York for many, many years. For decades, for decades, New York has not been won. And that's why you see the big poll numbers. Don't believe the polls. Go out and vote. Don't believe the polls. You know, the worst thing, they'll say, oh, Trump's going to do well. I don't have to vote. The more... <laughs> The more we win by, the... <laughs> let, let me tell you. Sorry. That guy's a professional agitator. Do you, do you? No, it's true. The safest place to be anywhere is at a New York rally. It's true. A New York rally headed by Trump is the safest place you can be. There's love in the room. There's love in the room. I was up yesterday and I've been all over the state. I was in Syracuse. I've been all over. Big, big crowds, 20,000, 21,000 in Albany, a beautiful arena, by the way, 21,000. We were all over Rochester, and it's the safest place. And I say it all the time because the press refuses to say it. Now, there, I love you too, darling. <laughs> They'll show this professional. You hear the way he got up and he stood, he's dressed all nicely. He's not for real. They'll show this guy. They'll say Trump had a protester in Staten Island. That'll be like 90% of the story. They won't say that we have a record crowd, the biggest in the history of a hotel that's how many years old? Come here, come here. Come here. The owner. How old is this hotel? 15. It's 15 years old, so we have a... That, I thought it was, you know, well, it looks very good. I was going to say I think it was old, but I'm not going to say that. Something nice about old. 15 years, the biggest crowd. Look, they're not going to say that. They're going to say, a man stood up and he started shouting. And did you see that guy? That guy's a professional guy. He was paid to be here, probably. Okay, so let me just tell you. First of all, nobody has more fun than we do at our rallies. Do you agree with that? Nobody. Nobody. And second of all, we have all this live television. It's always live. It's live. Look, there it is right up there. Look. That looks... Look, there it is. We're live. Always live. Someday I wish you'd turn off the live television. Then we could really have fun, right? It's always live. But let, let me give you... There's no, no place that's more fun. And there's no better people. And I have to say this. Because we are on live television. We have to bring this country together. We have to unify this country. White, African-American, men, women, young, old. We have to bring, not just the people, we have to bring our country together and remember it. And I'm a unifier. A lot of people smile when I say that. They think, oh, I want safety. I want security for our country. I want strong borders. We're going to have a wall. We're going to stop the drugs from coming in. We're going to have a wall. Believe me. Believe me. I mean, today, on the top of Drudge, Matt Drudge, who's a phenomenal person, a phenomenal guy, it's a big deal, top of Drudge. China is upset with Donald Trump. How dare them? So they go, they're upset. No, here's the story, big, the biggest story, top of Drudge, big story. 
China is upset because of the way Donald Trump is talking about trade with China. They're ripping us off, folks. It's time. I'm so happy they're upset. They haven't been upset with us in 30 years. They're never upset. I mean, we have a trade deficit with China of $500 billion a year, okay? They tax, and you know, they said we're not living up to treaties. They're the ones that don't live up to the agreements because they tax. I have friends, they're manufacturers. They can't get their product into China, and when they do, they have to pay a tax on it. And let me tell you, it's them that's the problem. And they're going to treat us fairly, and they're going to treat us justly, or it's bye-bye, bye-bye. And what we don't know because our leaders are incompetent or, by the way, they're taken care of by the special interests, which also happens. You know, like Ted Cruz, he's got the oil industry, he's got all these people. Let, let me just tell you, they're taken care of by the special interests and the lobbyists, 100 percent. Because a friend of mine came up to me recently and said, Donald, I don't understand. Why would they have approved this deal? And a particular senator, why would he do it? Is he stupid? I said, no, he's very smart. He got huge campaign contributions. That's the only reason he's doing it. The guy said, but it's so bad for the country. I said, this senator couldn't care less about the country. He just cares about his campaign contributions. I'm self-funding my campaign. Okay? So... You know, I tell the story all the time. I love the story. It could, could be any company, but Carrier just left, as you know, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. Great place, great city, tremendous people. And they just left. And they fired viciously 1,400 people. And they moved to Mexico. They said, we're moving to Mexico. You see, many of you have seen the clip on television. It's all over the place. They say, sorry, we're moving to Mexico. Everyone's essentially fired, right? Like The Apprentice, you're fired. Vicious. No, vicious, though. And they're going to move to Mexico. And here's what they're going to do. They're going to make air conditioning. They make good product. I buy a lot of carrot. I'm not buying them anymore, by the way. They make good product. They make good product. So they're going to move to Mexico. They're going to build a plant. They're going to sell it to the United States. They'll go through our Swiss cheese border. They're going to, but not if I'm president. It's not going to be Swiss cheese anymore. Oh, that's going to be a border. And by the way, people will come into our country, but they're coming in legally, folks. Legally, okay? Coming in legally. So... So they'll make their product and they'll sell their air conditioning units and they come in no tax, no nothing. And here's what I do. My wife always says, please, please be more presidential. In other words, don't be so tough. We need toughness. Hey, by the way, by the way, in this room, I would say 95% of the people disagree with her. Okay. But... Ivanka, my daughter too. She said, dad. In the last debate, you know, I've won every debate according to all of the sites that do the polls. I've won every, I didn't know about debate. I never debated. I mean, I debate, my whole life is a debate. But the politicians, all they do is debate, right? They debate. Every night they debate. So who knew it was going to work out this way? And I've been center stage every single debate, meaning number one. Every single. We've been leading every single debate. But here's what we're going to do. So my daughter and my wife, they say, please, please, act more. So the last debate... I was much more, I, I was like this, and you know, they hit me a little bit, and I'd go, hmm, ah, instead of hitting back, and I did well. It was much less exciting than the other debates, for one thing. I guarantee, and I won that debate. I actually won that debate by bigger numbers, so maybe they're not, but it was the most, by far, the most boring debate. Okay, that I can tell you. But here's what I'd do with Carrier. I'd say, congratulations on your new plant. Have many, many years of success. But here's the problem, and here's the bad news. Every unit that you make and that you send across our now very strong border, you're going to pay a 35% tax on that unit. Okay? Now, folks, and, and Staten Island has it. I have all your statistics here. I don't want to read them to you because you'll be depressed, okay? But I say that. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to call and they're going to have lobbyists call me. They didn't give me any money. I've turned down. I'll bet you if I wanted to, I would have raised at least $500 million. You know, Bush, Jeb, he had the biggest one. No, Jeb had $148 million. Think of it. We go to New Hampshire. Jeb was expected to win New Hampshire big, right? So I went in a landslide and I spent a tiny fraction. I spent $2 million, even less. And he spent many, many, many times that. 
And I said to myself, who do we want? Same thing, South Carolina. I spend a very little. Everyone else spends. Cruz was supposed to win there. He got killed there. Remember, Cruz was going to win. That was his wall, they said. That was his wall. Lion Ted. Lion Ted. Lion Ted was supposed to win South Carolina. I won in a landslide. But here's the beautiful thing. We're New Yorkers. We're smart. We have New York values. And let me tell you, the country respects these values. Because who would you rather have? The person that came in number one and has spent less than anybody else by far, or the person that's down at the bottom of the pack and spent more money than anybody else by far, okay? So, so, so I've spent, you know, relatively speaking, I've spent far less money than anybody else. We didn't play in Colorado because it was run by the bosses. I only won. And by the way, just so you know, they lie. They lie. It's all a rigged deal. They lie. They lie. Let me tell you, they said we didn't change anything. Well, they did. I announced in June. I then heard that Colorado, I was going to win big, like I did in Florida. I won big in Florida. Landslide. So I, it was a landslide. But I heard that we were going to win big. We did some internal stuff. We we're going to win Colorado big. Okay, so it's June. We're doing well all over. Right from Almost from the beginning, we've been number one, right? Almost like it took a couple of weeks to get the message out. But once the message was out, which is jobs, trade, strong military, take care of our vets, get rid of Obamacare, get rid of Obamacare and replace it with something great. Take care of our Second Amendment, which is under siege. We're going to take care of it. Terminate totally Common Core. Bring education locally back to Staten Island. So once they heard, once they heard the message, I mean, it was, it was like, it was over. I mean, it was over. And I can only tell you this, nobody can beat my message. And remember, remember, so importantly, when I watched Lion Ted the other night say, we will bring jobs back and we will strengthen our border and we will build a wall. He said, a wall. I said, where did that come from? Where did it come from? All of a sudden he's talking about a wall. He told me six months ago, you'll never build a wall. And by the way, Mexico's going to pay for the wall. They all came up, 100%. 100%. Mexico's going to pay for the wall 100%. Now, here's the story. Here's the story. We have a trade deficit with, and I love Mexico. I love the Mexican people. I love the Hispanic people. I'm winning in the polls in Nevada. I won tremendous Hispanic population. I was number one in the polls with Hispanics by far because they know I'm going to bring jobs back to this country. So what happens is I see these people and now they're copying me. They're copying me on so many things. Remember I said, keep the oil. We should have never gone to Iraq. I never wanted to go to Iraq. I was against it from the beginning. They should have never gone. But now you're there. We're leaving. I said, keep the oil, keep the oil from everybody. Keep the oil. They didn't do it. So now who has the oil? ISIS has the oil. Iran is going to have the oil after that horrible deal, that grossly incompetent deal made with Iran. The best deal they made is we handed them Iraq on a silver platter. The second largest oil reserves and the most beautiful oil there is, by the way, phenomenal quality oil. We gave them Iraq. They've been fighting forever to try, but yet two military powers the same. We gave them Iraq. So we're not going to be the stupid people anymore, folks. We're going to start, we're going to start winning again. We don't win. We never win. We never, ever win. When was the last time you saw a victory for the, we don't win on trade? We don't win for our vets? Our military is being decimated with cuts and everything else at a time when we most need our military than ever before. I mean, we have... We have nuclear weapons that we don't even know if they work. And I wouldn't say this, except stupidly they allowed this to go on 60 Minutes, a big television program, where they talk about telephone systems that are 40 years old and the wires they can hardly hear on the other side. This is what we have. Russia is upgrading their nuclear capacity and capability, and we do nothing. 
And we have stuff that's so old and so rotted that we don't even know if it works. It's going to be a whole different ball game, folks. It's going to be a whole different ball game. You know, Vladimir Putin said Donald Trump is a genius. He's going to do very well. That's a real genius. So he said, great. So these people that I'm running against, we want you to disavow his statement. I said, are you crazy? I'm not going to disavow that statement. <laughs> Believe me, he's not going to get anything with that statement. Except this. Wouldn't it be nice if we actually got along with Russia? Wouldn't it be nice? It would be okay. It's not so bad. I can think of other places to spend our money. All right? So here's the story. We're going to have a really big thing happening on Tuesday. And we've had this wonderful group of people. And look at you're still standing. You people don't bother sitting down. Has this ever happened before? This has never happened before. No. Look at this. Nobody sits down. Now, the press won't report that. This dishonest media, the most dishonest group of people. They won't report it. Fox is not going to report it. A new reporter will take his place. Fox won't report it. What's going to happen is this. I hope you heard that, John. What's going to happen is this. They're going to say, we're in Staten Island. Donald Trump just made a speech. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> They're not going to say that the audience was packed, the biggest crowd they've had in 15 years. They're not going to say... Don't forget, this is your big dinner. This is your Lincoln Day. But they're not going to say that. They're not going to say that not one person in the audience for a 20-minute speech sat down. Nobody's seen that before. So here's the story. On Tuesday, you're going to go vote. You're going to get everybody you can. You're going to go vote on Tuesday. And when you vote, you're going to look back on that vote and this day, but that vote much more importantly. You're going to look back and you're going to say, that was the greatest vote I've ever cast, ever, ever, ever. You'll be thinking about it in two years, in four years. Don't worry, we'll get things going fast. And you have to look at my answer, my response to China. You have to look at it because it's what somebody has to say. We can't continue to be ripped off like we're being ripped off, folks. So it's, you've got to look at it. And it's not war. I'm not talking about war. But they have waged economic war against us. The, what China has done, you know, we have rebuilt China, just so I hope you're all happy with that. In the meantime, you can't get funding for your schools in Staten Island, right? Or your roads, which have potholes, I hate to say. So just so you understand, just so you understand, we have rebuilt China. They have bridges going up. They have railroads like you've never seen. We have the old Long Island Railroad. Chug, 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 chug. It runs into a train in front of it. You saw that the other day, a big collision where they have collisions. And it's like we're a third world country, folks. Not going to happen anymore. They have trains that go 250 miles an hour. We have old stuff. So here's, thank you, honey. So here's the story. Here's the story. What China's done to us, and this is only one country, I hate to use them, but they're the biggest abuser. They abuse us, it's beyond belief. And I'm not angry at China. In fact, I respect them. I made a lot of money dealing with China. A tremendous amount of money. I built a great company. I made a tremendous amount of money. I'm not angry at China. I'm angry at our leaders for being so incompetent that they allow it to happen. So, and I said this as part of my response to the Wall Street Journal when they just called. I said, in the history of the world, this is the greatest theft ever perpetrated on anyone or any country, what China has done to us. It's the greatest single theft. They've taken our jobs. They've taken our money. I mean, I see the buildings that are empty all over Staten Island, and I see them up in Rochester, and I see them in Albany. And I see them in Rome, our Rome. I see them all over. I was out in, in, on the island. I was out in Bethpage. And you see what's going on. Uh, it, it's really, really sad. That's not going to happen anymore with me. It's going to be turned around fast, fast. And, and, you know, the truth is we have the card. So here's the story. We don't win anymore. We lose all the time. Our military can't win. We can't beat ISIS. Can you imagine General George Patton? 
who was so rough that he would be thrown out of the army. Right now, he couldn't even be a general. They'd throw him out. You know why? He's not politically correct. We need less political correctness. Somebody told me that General Patton, on occasion, you know, his soldiers would die for him. General MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, also great. But General Patton was such a rough guy, he would, on occasion, slap his soldiers. He would slap them, real in the face, slap them. If that ever happened today, they'd put him in jail for the rest of his life, maybe give him the electric chair, right? It's a whole different, right, Father? Look, I'm looking at the Father. Even the Father's smiling at me. Because he understands what I'm saying. Now, we need our great leaders. We have to fight. We have to fight. You know, we have to stop the oil. And I said, because ISIS is making their money. Libya, which was a pure Hillary Clinton deal, all right? No, pure. So ISIS, ISIS has now taken over Libya, and they've taken over the oil, and they're selling all Libyan oil, and we don't do blockades. We don't do anything. We're, we're run. How about when they take the oil? How about the truckers? We send down leaflets. We will bomb your truck. Please remove yourself from the truck. In one hour, we will start bombing your truck. Do you believe? No, do you believe this? Then I also heard, but this must be a joke. I also heard the reason we're not doing big damage to the oil fields is because environmental protection. They don't want to do it because of them. No. And at first I said they're kidding. But now I heard that's really true. It's like a strategy. They don't want to create an environmental problem. Can you believe this? This is it. Tell that to George Patton. Tell that to George Washington, okay? Tell it to anybody. They would look back. They would say, what is going on with our great, great country? What is going on? So we're going to make America great again. Ready? We're going to start winning again. We're going to win with our military. We're going to win for our vets. We're going to win on our borders. We're going to build the wall. We're going to win on our borders. We're going to win with trade. We're going to go from the worst deals ever made to great, great trade deals. We're going to bring our economy back and our jobs back to Staten Island, too. We're going to win on education. We're going to win on the Second Amendment. And we are going to win on health care. We're going to win so much. And I do this, and I kid with it, and I have fun with it, but it's true. We're going to win so much. We're going to win, win, win. You people are going to get so tired of winning. You're going to say, please, Mr. President, let's have a couple of losses. And I'm going to say, no way. We're going to keep winning, and we're going to make America great again. Thank you, Staten Island. I love you, Staten Island. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get out and vote. Tuesday, get out and vote.